we call to order the regular meeting of West Valley City Council. We note that we have six members of the council present. Uh, Councilman Tom Hewn is excused tonight. Uh, and uh, tonight I have the opening ceremony. And what was planned did not come to fruition. And so uh, I thought it would be appropriate, just uh, given the time of the year, to make a couple of comments. And uh, I went out, and uh, of course, this is a time of year when there are many celebrations taking place. And uh, I always consider the human family to be under a very big tent, and there's all sorts of different people in that tent. And uh, maybe it's kind of like the circus where some people like the elephants and some don't, uh, but everyone has something they like. And, this time of year, I believe that for the most part, there's always something that someone enjoys. Uh, Hanukkah was just celebrated here just in the past couple of weeks. I think it went from the 2nd through the 10th. And uh, that is a celebration What, uh, from what I read, and I'm certainly no historian nor authority, but uh, that be, is a by definition of Wikipedia, a minor religious holiday originally, but it has grown in popularity and has become uh, another, another avenue, and it says the commercial application of that for giving gifts and food and so forth has grown tremendously in this country. Uh, and so... Uh, Many people are concerned about the commercialization of the holidays, whether it be Hanukkah or Christmas, and I am not. I say everyone's going to celebrate in the way that they feel appropriate for those who want them to be traditional religious days. That is very acceptable in our society. It's also very acceptable to have Santa Claus and be a focus of the holiday and then there's others who uh, have tried to come up with something different. I know uh, Kwanzaa, am I saying that correctly, was instituted in, I think started in 1966, that's what it was. And it was by an individual who didn't like Christmas or Christians and wanted to have a holiday that focused on African Americans. And so there are those who then use that, but uh, as happens in our country, it's kind of assumed a dual role. Many African-American families will celebrate Christmas, and then Kwanzaa, which I think is from the day after Christmas to the 2nd of January. And, uh, and of course, they borrowed liberally as well. They have a seven-candle type of uh, display, and for Hanukkah they have an eight candle display, they're very, very similar, and uh, so I guess you kind of get traditions that kind of melt together and change and morph, and everyone finds a way to celebrate the holidays in accordance with their own desires, and that's one of the great things about our nation, and that is that the tent is big enough to fit them all. And uh, as I look around our state and I see all the Swiss days and Scandinavian days and the Scottish festival and I mean the list can go on and on. So cultures are celebrated, uh, particular holidays are celebrated. Uh, I've even seen a few people from who must have a pretty close tie to England will put up something celebrating Boxer Day uh, and I guess everyone has their tradition. Boxing Day. Boxing Day. Well, I had ancestors somewhere that came from England. And I, sorry, I don't celebrate that. But I'm happy to help anyone else celebrate any of these others that they would like. And so at this holiday season, I say to all who uh, are using it to spend time with family, uh, to be charitable in their giving to worthwhile organizations to give gifts of love and appreciation to family members and friends. I say to you the best wishes that I can give 
for it is a great time of year, a time that reminds us of our, our religions, it reminds us of our humanity, it reminds us of our cultures, it reminds us of our relationships with one with another in the best of ways. And I am very grateful for these times that offset some of the negative and reprehensible things that occur in the world today. But to see these and the many people willing to give to the Salvation Army or to anyone else, their red kettles, uh, it's a great time of year. So for this opening ceremony tonight, I just say to all of you, uh, I should have disclosed at the start that I do have a conflict. I am a Christian, so yes, I do celebrate Christmas. Um, but I also say, uh, being an American, I defend the right of all those others to celebrate as they would like to do. So to all of you, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, enjoy the celebrations, and be safe. Thank you. With that then, what, the week before Christmas and no scouts? Hmm. Everyone's taking the week off. We'll go then to our minutes of December 11th, the motion on the minutes. I move for approval of the December 11th minutes. Second. Properly before us, uh, seeing no discussion, all in favor of approving the minutes, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. <coughs> Passes unanimously. The minutes are approved. Next, we have our public comment period. We have some people signed up to speak. And uh, I'm just looking here. Remind you that the maximum of five minutes, there's a timer here. Uh, it is not a debate or question and answer period, although a couple of you have been here before. I'm never sure looking at the names if it's the same ones and uh, so be direct and be brief and we'll start with Bob first and now I beg your pardon I'm going to be uh, making a comment during the public hearing oh yes if you're here to comment on either of the public hearings A or B application S13 2018 or application Z12 2018 reserve your comments for there because we'll have a separate one that but during that time it must be directly to that this one the public comment can be anything and then Calvin Fors hello my name is Calvin Fors um, I appreciate your time to address the, the council and the mayor um, I'm here kind of a twofold I'm a uh, I'm a citizen of West Valley, have been now for about 13 years, and born and raised here in the Valley. And I'm also a member with the Carpenters Union, and I believe it was, it's was it been about a year, I don't exactly know, you may remember, but I got up here and spoke about the, uh, the prevalence of uh, tax, of payroll fraud, if you will, that's in the construction industry. And uh, my concern at the time was the uh, Fairborn Station project, that's just right over here, and uh, I've, I've seen it. Uh, as, as part of my daily duties, I go out and we look at jobs. We're trying to find guys that want to be uh, that want to better themselves and be members of the union. And we also try to uh, police some of the uh, ills of the construction industry, as far as uh, you know, worker uh, abuse, things of that nature. And part of this that we've discovered, and it's all over this valley, uh, from north of Ogden to south of Provo, is uh, on a lot of these projects, especially commercial. Some of them that have uh, public money involved. Uh, some of these workers are paid cash. They're paid under the table with literally an envelope full of uh, greenbacks or possibly a check with no deductions. And this, it's, it's a real problem and it's twofold because it's, it's stealing uh, payroll taxes that would go to the communities in which these, these projects are being performed and it doesn't provide any protection for those workers. There's no workers comp. There's no unemployment. Um, if that guy gets hurt, he, he has to go home until he's better. So it's, it's a detriment to his family. Um, and there's, there's, there's just no way to combat it that I've seen other than a more concerted effort by administrations and enforcement to go out and, and capture these guys. The way they do it, I really don't know how they get around it. 
it's you have a general contractor, then you have a subcontractor for several aspects of the construction, and then they will subcontract it out to a, a guy that we call a labor broker. He basically has a, a, a contact with several guys that are in the trade, and he will, well, I need you to work over here, I need you to work over here. And it's, uh, it's just, it's a, it's a real serious problem in this state. It's, I mean, the, 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 it, I don't know how to explain it, I really don't have the words, but it's, it's bad for the community, it's bad for that worker, and ultimately it's killing an industry that has uh, fed my family for almost four generations. Um, my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather all have fingerprints on various projects throughout this town. So I'm just, uh, I'm just up here, like I say, to kind of remind you, I wish I'd been up here uh, more, and I'm going to try to make an effort to get up in front of this council and, uh, and see if we can come up with some solutions to this problem. Because it's, like I say, it's uh, uh, a skilled trade is a good, noble profession. And this is taking that away from a lot of those people that, that uh, would rather do that, um, but they don't have any other recourse. Because if, if this contractor says, well, why should I pay you this much when I can get this guy that's going to bring me a bunch of guys in here for less money, why should I pay you that? So it's keeping the wages down, it's keeping the benefits down. You know, construction is a, you can provide for your family, you can have a good wage, you can buy a house, you can have insurance for your families, and this is taking all that away, and it's getting worse and worse. And so I'm just up here to kind of let you know, um, you may be seeing more of me. This is more of a, a cordial, you know, I'm not up here to start pointing fingers and banging the gavel or anything like that. I just want to let you know that uh, I'm out there and I, like I say, not only uh, with my with my job, but just as a as a citizen of the city. There's a lot of construction coming up, um, and it will continue. And uh, there needs to be something done about it. So, uh, I my number's on the on the sheet, and I'd love to, uh, you know, I'm open anytime. So thank you. Thank you. Next is Ben Nguyen. Sorry, I probably pronounced that wrong, but uh. you're okay, Mayor. I, I appreciate it. It's I don't think I've met, ever met anybody that was not Vietnamese that could pronounce my um, last name with the proper, with the correct dialect. But uh, yeah, I, I appreciate uh, you and the steam panel here. Um, I've been up here before. I just wanted to voice my support for um, the uh, changing of the, the pet ordinance. Um, I was in the study meeting. I did hear the reservations with the council members regarding certain things that were they were concerned about. Um, I I, I want to just make it clear, like I, I do support both cats and dogs. Um, I if the, it does go up for consideration, I would like to possibly have the dogs in consideration as well, um, not just the cats. Um, and uh, you know what, whatever, like you guys want to, you know, talk about as the proposed resolution. Um, like I'd like to just make it clear. Like I want, I do want at least to, you know, to keep my four. Um, whether it's just four total, like the ordinance right now, how it's split half and half with half, two dogs, two cats, or pigs, or I don't think there's a limit on chickens. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it with the, with. With that being said, I just want to make clear what I wanted, um, and, or with the, the hobby permit thing's the best way to go about this. Um, you know, as the uh, uh, animal services uh, uh, administrators talked about, the person in West Valley that had a sports permit, you know, they, they haven't gotten any complaints on him. The residents in Taylorsville that have a hobby permit that allows them to have more animals that they could care for, they haven't received complaints that I, that I heard during that meeting. So, you know, it, it, it shows that the responsible pet owners that are going through the measures of taking care of animals properly, they're doing the right things and there haven't been any additional burden to Taylorsville from what we've heard today. Um, and since we're already enforcing the Taylorsville, um, you know, we're, we're part of, you know, we're our animal services are in line with Taylor's, but we're enforcing their policies and so, and so forth. If there was uniformity with that, you know, give great responsible pet owners the ability to take care of more animals um, without any other uh, undue burden on our, our, you know, on our resources right now. And, 
uh, additionally, um, you, you know, I, yeah, I just, I just from like just hearing the different things and, and so forth today, uh, you know, it, it can make it where it's more of a responsible owner thing and, you know, if there's measures and metrics, I would happily go through any metric, any requirement, whether it's renewal of, you know, hobby permit annually to be able to keep mine, um, you know, and, and so forth. And I also want to bring up, you know, the, one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about uh, dogs and animals in general is, you know, like sometimes we like to bring up the negatives. Like, like there was that one story about, you know, three pit bulls knocking down, you know, going to their neighbor. But, you know, that's a very rare and isolated incident. It's not like we got like 100 cases of those a year. And you'll get more crimes from human beings, you know, committing vandalism, robbery things like that every day than you're ever going to hear of a dog, you know, going and that happening every single day. In fact, I live in West Valley and the other day my dad was parked in front of a hardware store and somebody smashed his front grill in order to steal his uh, car maker's emblem. But I feel like those are the important like issues where like, you know, listening to that police officer asking for more money in order to, uh, to you know, Hire officers and pursue the uh, Jordan Parkway. You know, making sure everything's safe. You know, I think those are very good uses of our resources versus you know cracking down on good on on good homeowners or like animals, uh, you know, pet owners and things of that nature. Um, and with the last minute of my time here, I when I was younger, I, when I was about three, four years old, um, I heard you know I heard your story, Mayor, about being bit when you go to. Went to get the mail before. That's kind of why you have your opinion the way you you have it. I have a when I was three, four years old, you know, I was lost. My dog, uh, my very first dog, Lucky, he found me. He pulled me home. I could have been I could have been on the news as a missing child. Instead, my dog pulled me by my back, and I remember vividly, vividly even though as a baby, and he brought me home. They serve a lot. They're more than just pets. So, and I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Was there anyone else here to make public comment tonight? Yes, come forward and state your name and address. Uh, my name is Alex Gonzalez. Uh, I live at 3232 South, 3450 West. Um, I'm also in support of the uh, pet ordinance, um, including uh, more dogs or cats. Um, you know, like you said, this is holidays, uh, we're a time where family gets together. A lot of uh, people, like myself, uh, we include our pets as part of the family. Um, you know, I'm not going to marry one, but you know, they're, they're around the house a lot. Um, when one goes lost or missing or, or gets sick, it impacts us as people. Um, more so, uh, when, when I have two dogs and someone I'm caring for also has two dogs and we want to bring our households together, now we're faced with this situation of whose pets, whose family members do we have to get rid of. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys have ever been in that situation, if you've ever had to make a decision whether or not your pets uh, stay or go, but it's a hard one to make and it, it, uh, it, it causes impacts on people in their lives, you know. Um, I feel that uh, if you include some sort of, uh, you know, taxes or, or uh, he suggested a, like an annual uh, renewal to uh, be deemed as a worthy pet owner, I think uh, those kind of checks and balances in place may uh, prevent a lot of the worry that you guys are, are uh, or not you guys, but people um, have about these uh, situations. Um, that's about all I have to say. Just um, happy holidays. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Hello. Uh, my name is Derek Newbold, and I am just wanting to add my own two cents on that as well regarding the pet ordinance or a hope to renew something along those lines. I am a fairly new resident of West Valley for about a year now. I live uh, like 3600 West, 4200 South. And I completely agree. I just want to echo their opinions on that. 
um, regarding you know honest pet owners who are running into troubles just because of the current policies. I don't really have much to add currently at the time, but I completely support their notions at this time. Thank you, and happy holidays as well. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no one else, then to our city manager, any comments you'd like to add? No, sir. Thank you. Council, any members? <laughs> any members? Any comments? Okay. Well, just one comment on the uh, payroll tax issue. Technically, the city doesn't receive any payroll taxes of any sort. No. Uh, and given that uh, most of that is collected by the federal government, although uh, income taxes, state withholding, if you will, would be collected by the state. And typically, uh, we would not be able to go in and do much with that without operating under their specific direction, I'm guessing. I've not, uh, and, uh, I worked for a development construction company years ago, four decades ago, and there were some problems there and they brought in a county sheriff, but it was for actual fraud, you know, phantom employees. But as far as collection of taxes, I'm not sure, although I'm sympathetic and support it totally, I'm not sure the city can do anything about that. Yeah, we don't directly collect taxes at yeah. least any of the major uh, sources that accrue to the city sales property we don't receive income taxes we get other tax uh, yeah. revenues that are administered through the state we do collect on things like as you know directly business licenses yeah. traffic fines that sort of thing yeah there's a lot we do but when you start talking payroll why right that's somewhat kind of out of our hands i don't know what we could do so rather than get into a policy discussion, I just mentioned that that we would probably not put that on our list of things to work on. Uh, the pet ordinance that we do have on our agenda, we talked about it earlier, and have come to some decisions, and so that should be moving forward. Uh, and so that will appear on a future agenda. So with that, I do have, I mean, now you've raised a comment in me, Mayor. Certainly we want people to be safe. We want our contractors and subcontractors to comply with the law, and not just because there might be a financial gain for us. So what enforcement, if any, do we have to make sure that they hire, you know, we've talked about documented workers before, but also that they are providing workers' compensation insurance and so forth. What, what enforcement arm, if any, do we have? The only thing that I can think of right off the top of my head, and we could certainly go back and research that for a little more depth, but would just be contractually. We always include in our contracts with any sort of construction firm or project or building that they will you know, abide by and, and, uh, and uh, abide by the law. So we'd have to do some sort of a sting and find out that they're not and then or work in conjunction with another enforcement agency that maybe specializes in that. Um, so yeah, off the top of my head, uh, like I said, that's about all I've got for you information wise. We can certainly go back and research that. But if something were reported to us specifically, hey, on this project there's all kinds of illegal <coughs> employment practices being done, we'd probably have to refer that to the Attorney General's office or yeah, or so maybe, yes, and or a state agency like for example and this isn't a, this isn't an exact uh, example but it's an analogy will often have uh, state department of public service or public safety in here doing traffic um, enforcement that's specific to their concerns from a, a safety standpoint that helps us we're aware of it we don't usually although sometimes we do we but we don't usually participate directly in that so some arm or venue like that although I have to admit I'm not aware of any state agency that actually goes out and does that either so we have to find out thank you well I do know that state tax commission is involved very heavily in that for fraudulently not collecting taxes or collecting taxes and not reporting them or submitting them. 
so there are state agencies that are involved with that as well. The same uh, with your uh, uh, withholding uh, for uh, FICA and for federal taxes. That also there there are organizations within the federal government who do investigate those, and of course the IRS always. So uh, yeah. And I didn't mean to imply we didn't care, we do, but there's not really an enforcement arm that we have to be able to do much with that, other than report it. And I'll just that, be responsible for our own contracts, to kind of self-audit, make sure the city contracts, the contractors are doing their job of making sure that there's no under-the-table payments, I think was more of the gist of it. Yeah. We have more control over that. We have some control over that. Okay. With that then, we'll close the public hearings completely. We'll go on now to for public comment on the non-agenda items. So we go to 7A. This is uh, application S13-2018 filed by Bob Thurstenau. And I hope I get that close. And final plan approval for Cap Co. 5600 West Subdivision, Lot 1B, at 2524 South, 5600 West. And uh, that particular property we've recently taken some action on as far as zoning, and this is to enable further work to be done there for this final plan approval with what they're doing. That is the issue before us. It will also involve Ordinance 18-47 to uh, make that change. With that introduction, we will now open public comment on this particular application. Is there anyone here who would like to speak to that? Thank you. I'm uh, Bob Firstenau. I reside at 7579 Mary Esther Circle, uh, Cottonwood Heights, Utah. Uh, we have a business uh, facility at 5600 West and 2524 South, which is a storage unit facility. Out front, there's a retail overlay, which is uh, comprised of one and a half acres of ground. Uh, we've already built one building on the site when it was zoned M for manufacturing. We're under contract with a dentist to purchase that facility. And we, we learned that uh, dental and one other category was taken out of the M zone and so it wouldn't be allowed. So we have been approved to, uh, to rezone to commercial C2, which does allow dental. Uh, and uh, so we're now here to uh, do a subdivision because C2 requires 20,000 square foot lots. We had four lots, we're going down to three to comply with the C2 zoning. And that's the crux of it really. Uh, we've been unable to market this property for a number of reasons, but uh, we don't wanna forego a sale to a dental which fits very well in the retail overlay mm -hmm. zone. So that's why we're here. If you have any questions for me, I'm happy to. Thank you. Doesn't appear so. Thank you. Anyone else to speak to this issue? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion and bring it back to the council. Mayor, I move for approval of Ordinance 18 47. Second. Properly before us, any further comments? Seeing none to our city recorder, who will take the roll call vote. Councilman Fiji Simonin? Aye. Councilwoman Link? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Northout? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next we go to application Z-12-2018, and associated with that is ordinance 18-48. This is filed by Ward Engineering Group. They want to change from agricultural to R17. Uh, this is uh, property at 4016 South, 
60th West. This is 0.68 acres, and as a result, it falls under the older portion of our code. It will not be residential estate, but can be uh, done appropriately under these old codes. Well, I guess they're not old, they're still in effect, so, because they're allowed there. And uh, what they're proposing to do uh, is divided, subdivided into three lots, keep the existing home. Uh, the average lot size will be 9,164 9, 9, square feet. And then the, uh, I think those are the main things. Uh, so that will be developed, uh, it looks like probably going into homes, but our role here is to decide whether we approve the uh, change. And so that is the issue before us. Is there anyone here to speak to this issue? Come forward and your name and address. My name is Satar Tabriz, I'm with World Engineering Group. I am here to answer questions. And the owner is here too. I don't know that we'll have a lot of questions, but we can see. You have anyone have want to have a question? Okay. Anyone else want to speak before we close the public input? Okay. We'll close the public input or comment, bring it back to the council for their action or comment. I'd like to make a comment, Mayor. Okay. Um, I think one of the good things about our city is we have various housing styles, various housing lot sizes, um, and uh, you know nobody is combining lots. We're always looking at breaking them up and making them smaller. And I have pretty consistently, at least in my memory, opposed taking a agriculture a lot and just seeing how many houses we can fit on it. I'm not in favor of that and uh, just to uh, state that I would be not uh, voting to approve this action. Any other comments or actions proposed? I think we probably ought to get it on the table to discuss it. So I would move that we uh, approve Ordinance 18-48. Second. The motion is made and seconded. Property before us. Further comment or discussion? I think my one comment is I don't think this is being used for agricultural anymore. Um, some of that is quite a bit of that is going away. A small piece like this um, I'd rather see three nice homes on it than have it be an eyesore. So that's why I'm with, or voting for approval. Well, it could be three eyesores instead of one, or it could be uh, owned by and maintained by somebody that makes it a nice uh, large lot, right? Single family yeah. home. We don't always know who's going to be residing there 10, 15, 20, 50 years from now. It's true. I have a comment to make. It, it is interesting that, uh, you know, we set up our specific uh, code to exempt these from going to the larger lots. And I had thought that the intent was that that is exactly what we would do, is approve the smaller lots to fit in more with the neighborhood that they were in. And so, uh, I don't know, I guess it just, seems like that's why we did it back in the first place so and I noticed someone who wanted to make comments but we had public comment period and unless the council specifically wants to uh, adjust and reopen the public comment period uh, there won't be any comment maybe what we ought to do is see what happens with this motion and kind of go from there Seeing no further comments, to our city recorder for the vote. Councilman Norfell? Yes. 
Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Nay. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Titi Samanu? Aye. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes by majority. Okay, that's taken care of. Uh, then we have uh, next resolution, oh, which is still regarding this, and I didn't mention it before, but resolution 18-236, authorizing the city to enter into a development agreement for this property. Since the zoning has passed, I am in favor of the development agreement and move for approval of resolution 18-236. So. Property before us, any further discussion? Seeing none, to our city recorder for the vote. Councilman Fatisa Manu? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Northfelt? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next we go to uh, resolution 18-237. This is to execute an amendment to uh, the development agreement with Premier Land Development, property at 3879 South, 4000 West. And uh, let's see, anything else about that? Uh, oh, this is, uh, I had to look at it, and this is the one where we were changing one of our requirements on roof slope. Uh, the particular home builder uh, has what they call a prairie style home that does not have quite as steep a slope, and so has asked for a variation. Uh, exception to our requirement. We have done that once before at the Newton Farm subdivision. This proposal though is separate and each request for an exemption has to be treated separately on its own merits. Uh, so that is the issue before us to the council. I move for approval of resolution 18-237. Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, to our city recorder then for the roll call vote. Councilman Northfield? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Fiti Aye. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, next on our agenda, we have uh, resolution 18 238 to award a contract to all pro security services at the West Valley City Justice Court. Uh, we recently had, uh, that comes up for renewal every so often, and uh, the company, I guess, uh, technically we had before was bought out, and now there's a new company, so this is like a new uh, contract, but the company that bought them out is this company. So uh, uh, in that process, uh, we do contract out for the security services at our Justice Court, and as people are aware, there is a specific need for that in that arena, that area, and so uh, there are fees set up that this will specifically cover for the work that they do in our Justice Court. With that then, that's the introduction to the issue to the City Council. For approval of resolution 18 238. Second. Property before us, any further discussion? Seeing none, to our city recorder. Councilman Fiti Aye. Councilman Lang? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Northcott? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we have resolution 18 240. This is authorizing the city to purchase four CPR units and related equipment. Oh, you're right, I did. I marked off the wrong one. Thank you. Uh, even with the paper copy, I still get off. So let's go at resolution 18-239. This is to adopt our legislative agenda for the city for the Utah State Legislative Session coming up here in about little over a month. Uh, it sets out those principles that we work on and those are fairly standard from year to year and we do 
go and lobby at the legislature, and this gives a general guide to that process. So I got the right one introduced. May I move for approval of resolution 18-239? Second. Seeing no further discussion, to our city recorder for the vote. Councilman Nordfeldt? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Mueller? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Petisamanu? Aye. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Now to the one I was so anxious to get to. Uh, resolution 18-240, the purchase of four CPR units uh, for $62,392. Uh, these go on our uh, ambulance units in the city. We uh, have already tried these out. They are uh, very helpful in uh, performing CPR. As it says, delivers the exact chest compressions and the exact rate, which is almost impossible for humans to complete. Of course, if you don't have one of these, then humans do the best they can. But these are certainly a step forward and uh, we're excited to have those on there, or at least I should say I am as I'm making the comments. We'll see if the rest of the council agrees. That is the issue before us, the council. Well, they also are able to maintain compressions while they're being transported down the stairs or into the ambulance. Or oh, that's right. The uh, firefighters might have to pause for a moment. So with that, I would move for approval of resolution 18-240. Second. Okay, that's before us, any further comments? Seeing none to our city recorder. Councilman Fiji Samani? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Northfelt? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. <coughs> okay. Next we go to, I haven't skipped any, 18 241. This is to execute an interlocal agreement between our city and Salt Lake County for certain active transportation funds. And what this is, the county has uh, funds available for work. Uh, we applied for and received a grant of 27,500. And with our match of 2,500, it'll be used for to improve striping and signing for existing bike lanes within the city. And uh, we already have some of those done, but we need to follow a set standard. That's what it means by active transportation. So uh, we qualified for that. It's a good thing that uh, we're able to do that. Good program. With that, to the council. I move for approval of resolution 18-241. Second. Probably before us, seeing no further comments to our city recorder. Councilman Northfield? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Fittismanu? Aye. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, next we have resolution 18 242. This is to approve uh, a right of way acquisition service agreement uh, between the city and Davenport Consulting for Professional Services. Basically, what happens here is we have traditionally in-house uh, gone out to obtain rights of way to acquire property for road widening, intersection, expansion, uh, things like that. And given the projects that we are currently working on, on 4100 South, 2700 West, it has exceeded the time available for our staff to be able to do this. We have uh, it seems like they've used the, this company a couple of times before, familiar with their work, and uh, so we're going to enter into a contract that they will assist the city in performing those. With that introduction, uh, by the way, that uh, contract is for $60,000. With that introduction, Council. Just to uh, make a comment, it's up to $60,000. They're paid per acquisition, so it should be cost effective for us. And uh, with that, I move for approval of resolution 18-241. Oh, 18-242. See, I fell asleep there for a minute. I'm back. It's contagious. Uh -huh. Sorry. Second. 
Okay, it's probably before us. No more comments. Okay, to our city recorder. Councilman Fittismanu? Aye. Councilman Milling? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Norfell? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next we go to resolution 18-243. Now this one is a little bigger. This is to modify a federal aid agreement between the city and UDOT for reconstruction of 4100 South. We originally went in and got some federal funds in order to perform some of that work uh, and we were responsible for a local match, uh, but that was less than 7% of the project, but the project came in significantly higher than anticipated and that seems to be happening with all buildings, all construction. Uh, I know certainly it's happening at the county level uh, because of the environment and inflation going on and hard to get employees to work and they have to pay them more and steel is costing more, everything goes up and it's going up very rapidly. That's also in housing construction. So anyway, that's had an impact on this project, and so the fiscal impact will be, uh, I guess, six million dollars, Class C road funds, stormwater utility funds, and state transportation funds. And so that is the issue before us to the council. Move for approval of resolution 18 243. Second. Seeing no further comments to our city recorder for the roll. Councilman Northville? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Lang? Yes. Councilman Fiti Aye. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next we have resolution 18 244 to approve a betterment agreement between the city and UDOT for the construction of landscaping and related improvements on 4100 South. Uh, this is being, uh, they we're using federal funds there and as a result of that, UDOT controls that and the, uh, a lot of the work. This is for items that we want to do as a city in conjunction with that project. So uh, we're looking at putting in the pattern, it will include things such as patterned or uncolored concrete, uh, street tree blockouts, approximately every 30 feet, uh, new street lights, power poles, etc. Well, not power poles, but new street lights. Uh, and trees and associated irrigation, they cannot, those types of things cannot be purchased using federal funds. So in order for us to do it, we have to add the money. But it's an opportunity to do that while the construction is going on. So that is what happens, uh, $391,075. And, uh, oh, we're also going to landscape the stormwater detention pond there. So that is the issue before us. The council. Move for approval of resolution 18-244. Second. Okay. No further comments to our city recorder. Councilman Fittismanu? Aye. Councilman Malang? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Norfell? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we have a second betterment agreement with uh, UDOT, between the city and UDOT. Uh, this is for the burial, uh, resolution 18245. Uh, this is for the burial of certain power lines on or near 4100 South. While this is going on, uh, we use it as an opportunity to take the overhead power lines uh, crossing over 4100 South and those will be buried. Uh, and is being funded through this particular agreement will be $102,320. Uh, Class C road funds and of course some of that work is also being paid I guess by the state in conjunction with that. Uh, now most overhead crossings will be buried but not all 
on the roadway will be eliminated, but this is a major step forward. With that, to the council. As you know, I'm a big fan of the Barry power lines on 41, so I'm gonna go ahead and make the motion to approve a resolution 18-245. I thought I heard something there. Did I hear that? Yeah. Okay. I thought you started to say something, then you stopped and looked at someone else. I started and then I just finished. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> to our city recording. Councilman Northout? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Petisamanu? Aye. And Mayor Biglow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next, we go to resolution 18 246, and this is authorizing the city to purchase a vehicle. This one is from Young Ford, and if I get the right data up, let's see if I can get the amount. They keep changing the order, so. Not to exceed $42,000. The bid was uh, $41,500. This is for a Ford F550 crew cab and chassis. And uh, then the, they will take that and uh, be used in the operations division. They'll uh, be upfitted with an aluminum flatbed, toolboxes, pressure washer, and concrete sp sealer sprayer system. And, uh, and so I think these are also used for snow removal and probably a lot of other things we don't even realize. That is the issue before us to the council. I move for approval of resolution 18 246. Second. Seeing no further comments, to our city recorder. Councilman Fitisamanu? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Northfeld? Yes. And Mayor Biglow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Next, we have resolution 18 247. This is for the city to purchase two front end loaders from Wheeler Machinery Company. Uh, they're 935 M front end loaders. Uh, it's on the state contract. The total will be $320,176. Uh, this works out great. Uh, we were able to uh, utilize these for a year and with the buyback option we uh, end up almost getting to use it uh, for just what we put into it. Uh, and we can sell it actually for what we paid for it. So uh, seems like a good thing uh, that doesn't cover all the other costs of operation and maintenance and uh, the like, but uh, still a better deal than most. With that, to the council. Move for approval of resolution 18 247. Okay, properly before us. Seeing no comment, to our city recorder. Councilman Northfeld? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Petisamanu? Aye. And Mayor Biglow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, this next one, resolution 18 248, is to authorize the city to purchase three vehicles from Young Ford for use by the stormwater division. Uh, this is one F, Ford F, F-150 crew cab and two Ford F-550 crew cabs and chassis. And they'll be used in the stormwater division. Uh, so that's basically everything to the council. Oh, wait a minute, the total cost of that not to exceed $114,900, replacing existing ones. Move for approval of resolution 18-248. Second. Seeing no further comments to our city recorder. Councilman Petisamanu? Aye. Councilman Link? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Norfell? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, this resolution, 18-249, is for a contract with Yesco Sign Company for installing signage at Centennial Park and the Family Fitness Center. The proposal is to put an electronic sign uh, 
in uh, Centennial Park that would announce events there and then as well uh, some signage on the fitness center building that says that this is the uh, West Valley Family Fitness Center and it will be backlit this will show up at night as well so these new electronic signs uh, the particular the, the one that we have proposed which was approximately four and a half feet by six I believe it was and that was 54,520. We asked and got uh, a quote on one that was uh, almost seven foot, is that right, by 10 feet, a much larger sign, and it was 106,000? It was right about 104. 104,000. Including the concrete, which raises the sign quite a bit more than what it was. <clears throat> yeah, and the actual area of the sign more than doubles. And that is the size of sign that would be recommended to be visible by people driving by on 5600 West. And uh, uh, we believe that this is a plus. A lot of people don't know where the fitness center is, so they thought having the sign on 3100 South would help them identify that building. There are other things there in the park. And then this sign, uh, certainly one that I support, uh, will be used to advertise events and or activities at the fitness center, etc. It's probably enough explanation to the council. And in this one, if we want to adopt the existing, what's here, we don't have a separate document for that, do we? In our as far case. as the revised, is that what you're asked for, Mayor? Yes. We have no. Um, but, good question, and I would ask that whoever makes the motion <coughs> would include in your motion the increased budget amount. In fact, I'd ask for a little bit more just <coughs> to be sure we've got that covered, say, 110. And that way we'll have it on the record that we are actually authorizing the purchase of the larger sign. And that would be an up to and not to exceed amount. So our um, number three attachment has a contract with the ESCO of 116,667. So we did get that attached okay, to good. our. Okay, All right. All great. It is there. With the new sign. There's a new data. Illustration and such. Okay, so good. I think we can just. And what was, what was the amount again? 116,767. Okay, then that would be the official amount of yeah. one on there. Because that's the new sign plus the back lip on the actual fitness center right. combined. Okay. I think the 104 was just the upgrade on the. I think that's correct. So with that, I would move for approval with the amounts on illustration or on our attachment two and three. Yeah. As outlined in the contract Correct. with YESCO. Yeah, the resolution and the contract. Okay. Is on our agenda. Second the motion to approve resolution 18 249. Okay. We are voting on then the amended amount and contract. Seeing no further comments, to our city record. Councilman Norville? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Fiti Simonu? Aye. And Mayor Biglow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Next we go to resolution 18 250, award a contract to Courts Unlimited for resurfacing of eight basketball courts and the conversion of tennis courts to pickleball courts. This particular uh, contract is for 238855 that will come from our parks maintenance budget. Uh, these uh, particular facilities are in need of repair and resurfacing. And so they have uh, found a safe, consistent, and usable surface that uh, will work there actually better than what we currently have, obviously, since they're uh, 21 years old, 18 to 21 years old. So, uh, and these aren't like roads where we can seal them or patch them very easily. Tennis courts don't like any pumps. 
doesn't work well. Same with basketball courts, although they do work, but uh, these are getting to the point we have to change them. That is the issue before us. Uh, we will, as I understand it, have a possible future one for additional tennis courts to be worked on. These are just covering a few there at the fam Family Fitness Center. To the council. I move for approval of 18-250. Second. Before us, right, uh, no further comments to our city recorder. Councilman Batisimano? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? Yes. Councilman Mueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Norfelt? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, thank you. Next we have resolution 18-251. Uh, this is to for a contract with Intermountain Golf Carts for the lease of golf, golf carts with GPS units. Uh, this will be for both Stonebridge and the Ridge Golf Club. Uh, these are uh, done every, they have a useful life. The, uh, this, we're actually going to do this under a lease, I guess. Yeah, and the uh, the proposal is that by leasing them we eliminate the need to purchase them. They only have a life of about five years, but by adding these new features, which is the way golf courses are now going with these GPS units, they can identify where people are. You can also transmit messages to them. Uh, there's a number of different things you can do, and you can even put warnings on there when they might try and drive them on like the putty green or something so uh, there are some pluses and it helps with maintenance and so forth in that so with that we put out a bid and uh, the fiscal impact is one million eleven thousand four hundred and twenty one dollars that right over five years, yes. So, with that introduction then to the council. I think this is last thing on the Christmas list. And uh, I will move for approval of resolution 18-251. Second. Seeing no comments to the cap to our city recorder. Councilman Norfell? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Mueller? Aye. Councilman Lang? Yes. Councilman Fittisamanu? Aye. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, now this next one is a little more complicated. See how much information. Basically, resolution 18 252 uh, is to enter into a uh, lease agreement between the city and the municipal building authority. And by the way, that authority will meet right after this to address the same issue as the Municipal Building Authority. Uh, this particular agreement is to authorize the issuance and sale of lease revenue bonds uh, in an aggregate amount of not more than $19,500,000. These funds will be used for two purposes, a public works building and a parks and recreation building. And uh, those are the items that are included there. Uh, let's see. Uh, there are a number of items put on this proposal that we say that they have to fall within certain parameters as far as the amount as far as the rate, etc., And we hope that they will do better than that, and it's likely they will, but we want to make sure that once we go through these major documents, it takes a lot of work and effort on the part of our bond council, our financial advisors, to put all of this together and go through the process. So we give a little bit of flexibility in there knowing that uh, our staff and our uh, contractors associated with this will make sure that we get the best deal possible in the environment we're in. So, did I leave anything else out? With that then, uh, 
successful. Uh, thank you, Mayor. This is a significant amount of money. Just uh, like uh, some explanation from the city manager how we will pay it back. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. So this, I actually was thinking about this a little bit ago. If you'll remember my proposed capital facilities plan that we now have been fulfilling over the last few years. This is actually the last and I don't think it's the biggest. It's not the biggest, but it's one of the larger uh, projects in that series. And uh, basically the way that this will be paid for is through uh, sanitation and Class C and uh, utility type funds from Russ, uh, Willardson's operation as well as uh, general funds that will accrue as other debt projects from past years expire over time. So in essence, we've paid, or we have uh, designated and figured out where those annual payments will come from and we'll, there will be no need for uh, raising the taxes of any kind or increase. Now, of course, the other uh, commitment that goes along with that is that you won't be able to use those expiring funds from other projects for other purposes, but also to the council's past policy discussions and how you have considered and ranked various priorities, this seems to fall in the top rank of what would be the next project to be done. So I don't really see that as a policy problem for the council, at least as you have discussed it. Um, would you like to hear any further? Oh, I, I, that was sufficient for my question. I just like the uh, residents to know that this isn't a looming proposition that we haven't figured out a way to take care of. This is something that's been planned and <coughs> paid for with funds that are available and through retiring other debt. Uh, certainly um, Parks doesn't have a building that uh, it needs and Public Works building is obsolete and one thing that I like particularly about the plan is to take the uh, heavy equipment that's in the back next to the residents and their neighborhoods, take it and move it to where it won't be so much of a nuisance for them. I like the design that we have. And with that, I move for approval of resolution 18-252. Second. Before us, and I'll, I'll make a comment, and of course, uh, won't surprise the council too much. Uh, I occasionally have differing priorities from some of the council and uh, just because of my background and the like and so I will not be voting in favor of this that does not mean that it is not a good project it is it's just that my particular priorities and goals with uh, what is going on in the city is a little different uh, I think this is a project that would be addressed later on ultimately but, of course, the majority of the council's will will be manifest. So, uh, just my comments to our city recording. Council Murphy, do you have some other? Aye. Councilwoman Lang? No. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Norfelt? Yes. Mayor Bigelow? No. Motion passes by majority. Okay, thank you. Let's see, now we go. This has been a long agenda. <laughs> oh, don't say that. They're getting up and leaving. <laughs> no, we're almost getting close. Of course, we have another meeting after this. Uh, we go to item 9, new business. Application S-14-218 filed by Brooks Arnell. Uh, this is requesting final plat approval for property at 3403 South, Decker Lake Drive. And I'm just getting caught up here. I should have been paying more attention. There we go. There. And let's see, what is this one? I'm trying to remember. Oh, yes, okay. It's the old chilies, yes. Uh, the Chili's restaurant, or some remember the restaurant that was there, it's now closed, uh, has uh, requested their, their lot to be divided into two, diff two different parcels. They had an extra large parking area there. And uh, so uh, what 
The property consists of uh, 1.47 acres, so it's fairly good sized. Uh, and the size of these lots will meet all the requirements that we have in place and for all parking that will be required uh, for the uses that uh, will occur. So this is simply taking that one lot and dividing it into two and with that to the council. I would move for approval of that application S-14-2018. Second. Properly before us, <clears throat> seeing no further comment to our city recorder. Councilman Norfeld? Yes. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilwoman Link? Yes. Councilman Petit Simonu? Aye. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we come to our consent agenda. There are six items on our consent agenda. We normally do those as a group. Two of them are uh, rights of way, accepting a warranty deed, perpetual easement, and temporary construction easement on the project along, along 2700 West. Uh, and these are pretty routine. We've done a lot of them. The other four are ratifying the city manager's appointments of uh, individuals to various committees. Let's see, uh, to the Housing Authority, uh, I'm reappointed to that. Uh, the Housing Authority, Lars Nordfeld, is reappointed to the Sister City Committee. That's a reappointment of members of that. I think there were four that were, and then the City Manager's reappointment of members of the Audit Review Committee, and I think that one was, Lars, was that about four or five? Four as well? Okay. Of which Councilman Nordfeld, who's the chair, and I are both members. Part of that. So, with that introduction to the consent agenda, may I move for approval of the six items on the consent agenda? Second. Seeing no further comments to our city recorder. Councilman Fittislanu? Aye. Councilman Lang? Yes. Councilman Bueller? Aye. Councilman Christensen? Yes. Councilman Norfell? Yes. And Mayor Bigelow? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. That completes our regular agenda. We do announce and remind people that the council will not be meeting next Tuesday on Christmas Day, nor the following week on New Year's Day. Uh, so. Okay. And, and the council has reluctantly agreed to go with that. So, no, they, they were excited to be with their family. So our next meeting will be in January. I think it was the 8th. And that's part of the reason our agenda was so long is we didn't want to get behind. So, uh, But stay tuned. We do have the Municipal Building Authority that will meet immediately following this one. So can I get a final motion for this meeting? Motion to adjourn. All in favor of adjourning our regular city council meeting, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Our regular city council meeting is adjourned. I call to order the special meeting of the West Valley City Building Authority. Note that we have had an opening ceremony. Six members are present. Uh, Mr. Hume is excused. Uh, Mr. Powell, we have one resolution on our agenda tonight. Would you introduce that, please? Yes, sir. This is the building authority side of the um, transaction that the city council considered in the last meeting for the issuance and sale of 19, not more than $19,500,000 in bonds for the purpose of building the Public Works Building Park Building. Okay, any discussion or a motion? I would move to approve resolution 18 04. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, it's properly before us. Could we ask for a vote? Mr. Pete Aye. Ms. Lang? No. Mr. Bigelow? No. Mr. Nordfeld? Yes. Mr. Grishenson? Yes. And Chairman Bueller? Aye. Motion passes by majority. Uh, we have no further business. A motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. All in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. This uh, meeting is adjourned.